One of the first things we learn in Excel is the magic of the dollar symbol. If we place that dollar before a column letter or a row number, it fixes that row or column. So that if we copy or drag that formula, then the row or column doesn't change. It keeps pointing to the same place. And these are called absolute references. Now, when tables were introduced into Excel, they introduced this whole new way of referencing cells called structured references. And they don't work in the same way at all. And actually the dollar symbol doesn't work at all. So we can't use them to fix a row or a column when working with a table. But by the end of this video, you'll know how to create absolute and relative references for Excel tables. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here we are in Excel. You can see that we have a table here, and this table is called My Table. It contains information about the costs that a safari park, for example, might incur for looking after animals. So for a bear in the Wild Kingdom area, food is 650, the keepers are 80, other costs are 40. There's two of them, so therefore the total is the total of the costs times two. And that's the same for all these other values. And this is the data that we'll be looking at for our examples as we find out how to use absolute and relative references with tables. So let's move on and look at how we can use absolute column references. So anytime we use an Excel table and we reference that table, I'll type equals, if I select that total column, you can see that it has first of all the name of the table, which is my table, and then in square brackets it has the name of the column. Now, if I were to wrap that in a sum function, for example, that calculates to 42,860, exactly the same as the total at the bottom of that table. But if I were to drag that right, you can see that it loops round and goes to the start of the table. If I were to drag that to the left, it moves to the quantity column. So how can we get absolute column references that don't move when we copy or drag? Before that, I'm going to type equals sum. I'm going to select two columns rather than one and to close that bracket. Now I don't want to sum the quantity column. So instead, I'm going to reference the total column twice. So now if I drag this right, or I drag it left, you can see that that column reference is still fixed on that total column. But this does mean that any time that we reference multiple columns in this way, that it will make this absolute by default. So I've selected all the costs there. If I drag that to the right, you get the same value, and if I drag that to the left, you get the same value. So therefore, any time that we select multiple columns in this way, it gives us an absolute reference. But what if we want to select multiple columns but have a relative reference? In that scenario, we can type equals sum. I'll select the food column. I'll then enter a colon and select the other column. Now, it doesn't look like the keepers column is included in that range. But when I press return, you see we get exactly the same value. And if we highlight these cells here, they total up to 9030. So therefore, even though it doesn't look like the keepers column is included, it is including all the columns between the first and the last column selected. But if I drag that to the right, you can see those column references have changed. And if I drag that to the left, again, those column references have changed. The final option here is that we could, if we wanted to, just select individual columns separated by a comma. So I'll close that bracket. That calculates to the same number, but is draggable. If we only have a few columns to reference, that is a useful option for a relative reference. But if there is an entire range of columns, then using this other method may be a better option. Now, how about if we're using row references? So if I type equals in here, and I reference that total row, you can see that it references my table, and then in square brackets it has total, so that's the total column, and then it also has the at symbol. That at symbol implies that we want to invoke what's known as implicit intersection. What that means is that it will take that total column, but only return the cell that is in the same row as my formula. So if I were to drag this cell down here, you can see that it's now referencing this cell because it's picking up the total column, but only referencing the cell that's in the same row. So that at symbol invokes implicit intersection. Now, if I were to wrap this in the sum function, as we saw before, not that that's necessary in this scenario, but we'll just keep things consistent. 
Again, if we drag to the right, it loops to the start. And if we drag to the left, it moves left one column. So if we want absolute columns for a row reference, we can take a similar approach to what we tried with columns. So we can select both those columns, change that to total, press enter. And now that is an absolute column reference. And you can see that because the values stay the same. Now, the next two examples are exactly the same as we saw when we looked at columns. So if I want a multi-column to be absolute, I can simply select all of those columns, close that bracket, press return, and that will maintain that column reference. If I want multi-columns, but to be relative, then again, we use that same approach as we saw for columns. So I'll select the first column, I'll enter colon and then select the second column. I'll close that bracket, press return, and this reference should be relative. So those values change as we drag those cells. Now it's worth saying here that because these use implicit intersection, it means that the row reference is not absolute. The row reference will always be relative because it's looking at the row that's in the same line as the formula. So now let's move on and think about how we can make our cell reference absolute. So if I always want to reference the first cell in the total column, I can type equals index, open bracket, I can select my total column and then insert one to say I want the first row. I'll close that bracket, press return, and that returns 1540. For consistency, I'll just wrap this in a sum like all the other functions that we've seen in this video. Now if I drag this down, it still references 1540. If I drag it to the right, the cell reference changes. So that means that if I want to reference the exact cell from that exact column, I'll move my tooltip, then select my quantity and total columns, and then change my quantity to total. So that now gives me a row reference and the column reference that is absolute. Now, what if I actually want to have a relative row reference? Just copy this formula down here. Well, I can't reference number one because number one in this argument here is the row number. So it's always referencing row number one. If I reference to row number two, it changes to 4,500, which is the same as that value there. So I need the number two to create a relative reference. For this, I can use the row function of cell A1. I'll close that bracket and press return. So if we look at this formula, we can see that row of A1 will always evaluate to one. If we drag this down, the A1 will change. So A1 will become the row of A2. So therefore, this is now picking up a relative row reference. So again, if I drag this down, it'll pick up row number three. You can see there we have row number three, and that is the value that is returned there. So for this to work, we need to use an index function where we reference a row which can change by using the row function. You can see here, I've got a hash ref error. That's probably because I need to dollar my A1 cell. There we go. If I drag that right and I drag that left, that will now pick up a relative row reference from an absolute column. Just delete these two. So next, what about headers? I'm going to type equals and I'll select the total header row. I'll press return. And rather than the sum function, because that won't work with text, I'm going to use the count a function. So this will just count the number of items that have text. So that should return one. Now header rows are fixed with a absolute row reference by default. So even if I drag this down, it will always reference the header row no matter what. But this header row is again relative. If I drag it left and right, it gets the same number. But if I click it, you can see that has looped back to the animal row. And over here, you can see this has looped back to quantity. So using the same techniques as we saw before, if we want to get the count of a specific column that is an absolute reference, We can see that if we drag this right or left, that that cell reference remains fixed. And as you would expect, if we select multiple columns, that will also remain fixed in the same way.
there you go, those columns are now fixed on the cells, food, keepers, and other. And finally, just to finish this off, if I want a relative count of my headers, I can select my food column, enter a colon, select the other column, close that bracket, press return, and this is a relative reference because it has moved away from food and other and has now moved to keepers and quantity. So there you go, that's how we can create absolute column and row references for tables using columns, using implicit intersection for a row, using a relative row reference, and also looking at headers. Now it's worth saying that if we use totals instead, that they operate in exactly the same way as that header row. Now, if you were looking at any of the syntax as that was being created, you might be thinking, wow, that's so much more complicated than just using a dollar symbol, and it is. But the good news is that just by using the mouse, Excel creates all of this syntax for us. All we might need to do is to change the column reference that we're looking at. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.